What's up, Fusomania? Uh, how's it going? Uh, it's going. It's been a uh, the end of a, a busy run of gigs, trips, and all things work. <laughs> October is always that month for me. And uh, this month, I decided to cap it at two two big events, and then the rest I've just been clubbing it. So, Because I, I know every year I, I, I think... Why the fuck did I book 18 fucking events? I'm just about to kill myself. But yeah, right. I'm glad you're all right. I'm good. I'm good. It, it, it's just been busy. And, and any super notable things from this weekend that that went down or. Well, yeah, I had I, I did another wedding this weekend. I'm, I'm a wedding DJ now. I'm I'm rich. I'm 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 not famous, but I'm rich. And uh, I feel like DJ demand these days. Uh, I'm I'm stunting new watches. I'm I, I got ah. new I got new sunglasses and, uh, you know, all these things that these rich wedding DJs have. I have it's now about it. It's about it. It's about being a, a wedding guy. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. You gotta floss. You gotta floss it. It happened overnight. It was crazy. I was <laughs> I was poor and now I'm rich. So. <laughs> I don't know if it goes that fast, but um <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's definitely a jump. The weekend was good. I I, I started off normal Friday uh gig at fishbowl. It was good, solid night. It was kind of like weirdly busy. It was like a reverse. It, were, it was like busy from the start. And then like as the night went on, it just kind of like fizzled out. Um, so that was interesting. And then Saturday, I had another wedding down in Lexington uh, for Jason, um, who I've been working with, who was great. KY Pro DJ. It was at a venue called the Apiary in Lexington. It was a, it's a really nice venue. I'll just kind of go through the wedding real quick and then we'll talk about about um your weekend um so the wedding started uh with ceremony we provided ceremony sound so um they had uh uh, strings there playing so we were just doing the mics uh got that all mic'd up everything went smooth then right after that was over at this particular venue um they handle uh cocktail hour because the way the bar set up it's like kind of like three different rooms that it happens in and so um, unless you kind of see it, it doesn't make sense. But then once you're there, you're like, ah, I see why they play the ceremony sound. It just is all spread out. But they couldn't get the sound working. And uh, so I had to scramble, put something together for them. Um, had to uh, make sure the videographer had the right cable because they didn't bring the right cable. So uh, see, welcome I, to being a wedding DJ. It's uh, a <laughs> you got to be you got to be MacGyver. Basically, you're like, oh, I could do random X, Y, Z thing that you're throwing at me. Uh, let me right. just go to my toolkit, you know? Right. So luckily I had cabling, got her all squared away, and 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 that was good to go. Save the day with the cocktail hour outside. And, and I'm not saying this to, like, pat myself on the back. I'm saying because, like, this is the nature of it. You have to – if you're a pro, you have to be ready to, like, adapt in these situations. And, and having that extra stuff on hand is what makes you the pro. Yep. And uh, so – Everything went went great, smooth as could be, you know. Nobody even noticed that anything was happening outside of the ordinary. And uh, we get through um, introductions, all of that um, goes pretty smooth. Um, the wedding's great, looks super awesome in there. Um, get to the dancing part, open dance floor. It really was about an hour and 45 minutes of an open dance floor, which is awesome because I feel like you can just crush that, you know. Oh, yeah, um, you're asleep. Yeah, the one thing that happened is um, an interesting thing. And I think, you know, DJs don't talk about like things that happen at their events often enough because every DJ just wants to seem like they're awesome all the time. (laughs) Um, But I had an incident where I was playing a song and um, the bride uh, forgot to put it on the do not playlist. And she basically came up and told me to cut the song right away and was crying and then ran off 
like off to the side, which was super interesting because um, the song was Mr. Brightside and the whole place is like going nuts. And then I just cut the song and she's like off doing her thing. Oh, I'm like the new Don't Stop Believing. Basically, the new biggest sing along song that, you know, for every wedding, you know. Right, right. And, you know, she came back and I went and talked to her and the groom and she was fine. She was apologetic to me and I was apologetic, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I, you know, nobody wants to ruin anything for anybody, but she was like, I forgot to tell you not to play this song and it's totally my fault. And the night went on and everything was great. And at the end of the night, you know, they were happy. I was happy, but it's just one of those things that like a huge moment for like the party. And then I had to stop doing that. And then I had to try to bring the party back in, <laughs> you know, you, you cut it super fast and you're not even ready to cut it. So you're just like scrambling to just get something else on. Right. Did you, uh, what did you throw on? Did you have I, anything like in mind or it was just like, fuck it. Well, I just went to the folder that I, so I always make a folder. So I like really idiot proof things for weddings. Every wedding has their own crate. Every single song formality has its own folder within the crate. And then I, in that crate too, I put all of their, like, if there's any like must plays, I stick them in that folder as well. So I just instantly went to that folder and played one of the songs that was, you know, a must play for them. And it was fine, but it definitely like sucked the energy out of the room. And right. this isn't like a knock on them or anything. I'm just simply saying it because sometimes as a DJ in these situations, you do have to like be prepared for anything. And that's just another example. Well, at least she owned up to the fact that she didn't tell you. I mean, that really sucks though, because it's still like on her mind. But that being said, you know, it's, it is the a pretty huge uh, wedding song at the moment, so right. She should have. I, I I guess you can't ever possibly know that, but yeah, still. But other than that, it was it was a great great you know wedding, and it was fun. Everybody had a good time, and I just think it's important for DJs like if you're prepping to just make sure you're prepped to be able to get to a few songs quickly for um, that exact instance for something like that you know you just some most shit drops some most shit right. drops i'm like uh just cold and fuck it we'll do it live yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the drop-in edits you know are great for those kind of situations um when you can just grab uh you know a few of those maybe maybe make a crate that's just a bunch of drop-in edits that work really well that way it's slam. like yeah yeah i have all so. my titled slam but yeah that's a just because my crates are a hot mess, but yes, I could search it real quick and just hit it. But right, oh and then man, Sunday I just finished up the weekend, you know, playing at uh, Stretch Bar here. Um, before the Bengals game, we had an 8 p.m. Bengals game uh, this past Sunday, so it was also weird because I'm DJing and then it's like hype leading up into like a game where they turn on the game sound, so it's kind of like an awkward dynamic a little bit too because it was like I wanted to get it going, but then you don't want to get it going too much to where it's like once they flip it over to the game that it's like weird you know we d we i used to book a venue that did those those kind of things and yeah they they always wanted us to have everybody screaming and singing along at that but it was only enough for one maybe two songs right. and at that point it's like eh. but um but yeah that's a popular thing these days so you could get in there and right. make a couple extra bucks yeah my weekend was Typical clubs. I did my emo night uh, Friday night, my regular club. What was cool is I picked up an after hours afterwards. It's a hookah lounge. One of the guests that come into my regular bungalow spot, she just said she likes my set all the time. And this is her spot. And she like if I came in and played. And so I, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. You know, always up for something new. And get in there and it's it's hookah but they're <laughs> they're definitely walking some kind of line with the city i i, I can't figure it out i don't want to call anybody out but it was uh it was it was fascinating uh what was going on all above water in a in a real building yeah definitely interesting but it was fun so played for two hours there was an opening dj i jumped on afterwards and just you know they wanted it they wanted to keep the energy super high keep everybody awake because you know everyone's coming from the clubs a lot of people 
knew about it. So I guess it's it's kind of you know spoken out there. But yeah, it was did, fun. Did you play uh, like you normally play, or were you playing cool after hours John Summit no. six minute long tracks because <laughs> everybody's peak hour. tripping on drugs? <laughs> peak hour fucking regular club you know just balls to the walls let's go the opening dj was actually doing that what you're talking about <laughs> and and it was good i i would have liked it you know just the headspace i was in but you could tell that people could have probably started falling asleep or just kind of left afterwards because they'd be like ah, that was boring so the promoter was just like yeah just go all in so i had him dancing and it was fun Something different. Hey, I'm always open to making a couple extra bucks in any way you can. But I did not get home until about 7 a.m. And sleeping that whole day was, uh, you know, trying to recover to go into the night was definitely a harder thing to do. Speaking of music and all this other stuff, how are you doing with your, uh, you played any Halloween music? You know, we're, well, we're decorated for it and people ask me for it. I'm like, get the fuck out of here with your monster bash. You know, people are like, aren't you playing any Halloween music? Well, I could say maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm playing some Halloween music, Drew. <laughs> so Liam, Liam Gallagher is over here <laughs> ripping some Oasis Halloween bootlegs. <laughs> Yeah, it's the Monster Mash uh, with a Wonder, Wonder Wall, Wall over top of it. <laughs> so this is your costume. You've already decided. You're going. Yep. You're going to Liam Gallagher. I'm going full Liam Gallagher. I've got a, a really nice black parka that I'm gonna wear. And I like uh, those shades. Those shades yeah. are tight. Just this this right here. I feel like you know. Um, I'll be very comfortable this Halloween. There's two rules <laughs> to any uh, DJ Halloween costume, as anybody. Um, should know that your hands have to be free and you have to have your face available to drink. That's that's <laughs> the rules for a DJ well, Halloween costume. Uh, one year I was uh, Weird Al Yankovic and I had this gnarly wig and it was such a pain in the ass to like use your headphones at all on it. It was just getting stuck in this, his, you know, <laughs> giant curly haired wig. But <laughs> so, yes, I will not be doing that again. But yeah. I, I, so Halloween music, I have thoughts on Halloween music and I know you do too. And my first thought is if you're doing some kind of mix show for like a radio, a Halloween mix, anything like that, I think that's when it's your time to really shine with Halloween music and being able to, to get really creative and use sound bites and movie clips. I think in the bars, and clubs these days, I think it's just really a, you play Thriller at midnight, you know, when it's close to midnight and that's about it, you know, and somebody, there's going to be other DJ. Oh my God, you could play all the cool dude. Cool story. Yeah. I'm not doing <laughs> that. Like I'm not, I'm trying to keep the party going. This was, this was an above water one that I played. Um, it's again, that's where I think we're, we're agreeing on is Halloween music is unless you're playing the super obvious thriller or whatever it's 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 all you know you have to read into it a little bit so i did play that that kate bush uh running up the hill from stranger things right and I, I had someone get it you know but it's it's a stretch right know? i think like there's good little ones that you can play like uh and it's not even some stuff is like not halloween songs and you could play them and i think they work better like we were talking earlier like Dragula isn't a Halloween song. It's just a song called Dragula. And like Rihanna Monster is not a Halloween song. It's just a song called Monster. Well, but I'm looking at the list right here. So we got, let's see, Lady Gaga, Bloody Mary. You know, that was from uh, mm -hmm. that that TV show that was out. That's kind of Halloween-ish, I guess. Right. Um, Backstreet Boys, Everybody's Back. Backstreet's uh, I, Back. Yeah. I Halloween mean, I, music video. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, that's a stretch. I feel like people it would be over people's heads. Monster Mash. We're passing on Monster Mash. Uh, Dude, nobody wants to hear the Monster Mash at Sam midnight at Smith, a bar. <laughs> Sam Smith, Unholy. Um, Ava Max, Sweet But Psycho. I'm just kind of skipping around on these things. But uh, Blinding Lights, The weekend, maybe from the video? Again, I just think these are things that are going to go over people's heads that are drinking and partying. They're going to be like, where's my hotel room service? Where's my... <laughs> You know, N BMX, Nelly Furtado, Man Eater, the, yeah, Usher, yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, all that. 
<laughs> you just need to get a, a bunch of sound bites. I think the sound bites is where it, it kind of r- it runs. Is you get the thriller laugh going, you get some uh, some werewolf howls. You know, just stuff that you could kind of play throughout the night in between sure. stuff. And I think, um, you know, like the quick, like phrase made one that had like squid games and to do it to it. And it was like really quick. It's like 10 seconds. And I think those are fine, you know, where you can do something like that. But to play like a three minute version of a Halloween something or other in between like a dance set that where people are like dancing at the bar and like partying, I just think it's weird unless it's thriller. <laughs> thriller all day uh that's just the that's that's the mariah carey of halloween songs you know we'll right. go with that right that's, that's right it. and you know um i'm even willing to say that the steve aoki close to midnight remix is fucking fire and i play i i pretty much the last couple years i've played that one it's just a good updated version that doesn't make playing thriller sound weird in my like in the set so Will I am scream and shout? That doesn't. Uh, hey, pretty. <laughs> I mean, again, it's not a Halloween song, but if you're really trying to, you know, go in, sure. But that's uh, going to be over people's heads. There's not going to, they're not going to realize it. They're just singing along. Peak hour, song. peak hour, the cranberry zombie. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just get that heck, heckle going. I mean, you might as well just follow it up with linger because, you know, Halloween's smoky and stuff just lingers. All right. Well, that's enough with the Halloween crap. Um, Halloween is like my favorite time to DJ, though, because what I like about Halloween for me is in my city, I feel like it feels like the only night where it's like almost Vegas, like where people are out to party no matter what happens, they're in, looking stupid in their costume or if they're the other type of chick where they're they're dressed like a skank uh, because it's the one night you're allowed to dress like that. That's cool, too. But um, it's the one night everybody goes out. I love with, Halloween. Yeah. Everyone throws away all of their worries because they're pretending to be somebody else. So it's it's amazing. They can hide behind the mask and act a fool or act a slut, do whatever the fuck they want. And, you know. It's definitely my favorite party time of the year for sure. Right. Right. And I keep seeing all the TikToks of the uh, mean girls where she says Halloween's that one night a year where a dress girl can dress like a total slut or the opposite. And it's like that. And then it is like the girl that's dressed like fat bastard, like, like <laughs> from Austin Powers or like whatever, like ridiculous. And those are always hilarious to me. I love when people like really lean into their costumes well i like your costume i need to start working on mine so if anyone's got ideas throw them in the throw them in the chat or throw them in the you know the comments all right so another uh news for today uh last week i talked about mo knows best and my dilemma with that um i finally did hear back from him um on this past friday and he told me he would send me my money back, and I got my money back yesterday. So it took yet a few days to do that, but I did at least get my money back. Take with that what you will. You got to fight for your right. You know, get out there and get your money back. And I think uh, maybe some of the Daft Punks were out there uh, alley ooping you to get your money back and letting them know that it ain't right. So. Right. For sure. So and thanks to anybody that commented or, or uh, told me, you know, some other stories of their own. It's always good to hear from people. Um, with that being said, we're going to keep moving forward. Alpha Theta, a.k.a. Pioneer, dropped some new controllers. Yeah, let's get started with the first one they dropped is it's basically I think it's more of like a, a beginner controller. It's kind of taken over there. Was it the the FLX six? I think it was. Okay. Uh, yeah. basically yeah a little bit more of a budget controller um now that being said i actually really like this controller it does it does not have xlr outputs but you can use some quarter inch jacks it's not and it is record box and serato but no yeah. usb sticks correct I don't um, think you can use sticks on it uh, i gotta pull that up i'm not sure i i don't um, think i see one here with i don't think i see a usb a place to insert a usb well, um, yeah, it is a it is a budget controller. So, all that, that's, is that it at the top? You know what is cool though about it is that the uh, the power button 
Yeah, I don't see I don't see USB, but the power button. No, I think it's at the top, top right. Top right. Oops. Nope, that's a drum drum release button. Oh yeah, okay. Um the the power for this is USB C, which is freaking sweet. <laughs> you could power it with a USB C cable. Right. Right, right, right. I do love that. Um, I'll, I'll give my pros about this thing, and I, I haven't seen it. I would just recommend go watch uh, Mojax or Cleveland Terry or Preo and you know, Joni's got a couple. Preo and Joni, yeah, Preo and Joni. Go, go watch those. The, they break it down. But I'll just give my initial reaction to it. I love the layout of it. It's a, you know, it's a base controller, but it has. It's in the the styling of the CDJ three thousand. So all of the cue points are above the controller. So if you were to go to an actual club, you would be used to you know the three thousand format. the The thing that makes it gimmicky is what also makes it kind of cool is you can. Uh, it has like a, a pre built little stem thing at the top, so you could cut out the drums and. It has drum loops that you can add right into it. Again, cool, gimmicky in that just make it cheaper and take that shit out of there. It's it's unfortunate for some of these younger guys that are going to buy this and think that that's dope and then have to be take their controller to the club because they rely on that shit and they don't know how to get around it. It's like just right. make it basic to the pro. That's all we right. need. Basic version of the pro. Cut all the fucking horse shit out to just make it a cheap, nice controller that mimics the the pros. That was the whole idea of controllers in the first place. That's why we all switched over. Is like strictly convenience. And we wanted to I just, be able to. I just also think, why are we only doing XLR? Or I'm sorry, quarter inch outs. Yeah. Like, yeah. just put the XLR outs in there. Let's stop the with XLR. the. With uh, especially on a like a mid range controller like this, it's not their super cheapy, it's not their high end, but like, what are well, we the one before that? it was only RCA, so right. the fact that they added that in is a little bit of a step up, but I mean, yeah, not the best. And I'm, I'm guessing the sound card might not be up to par either to run it on its own without a mixer. So you are, you are going with it, some downgrades on that. So that's just initial, just look at it. Love the layout, extra bells and whistles we could take off and just give it a little bit better sound card so it's just does the job. Um, right. The next one that was dropped, the and they just kind of threw all those out this the same, uh, the same week. Right. But the next one that dropped is that uh, Alpha Theta XDJAZ4, which is a controller... Um, it looks like their flagship. It's going to be their main main deal. It's going to take over the one that looked like this before. But it's going your to, pads are underneath. And the pads are underneath. It's like they can't figure out the layout. We're just throwing all kinds of... There's too many fucking options. Make it... I understand it's alpha theta, but make it uniform. All your CDJs should be the same. You, you just released this one that's... Exactly to the three thousands. You're putting out three thousands that all have all the the pads all at the top. What are you doing? You know right. why is this a thing? the The screen looks amazing. It's definitely the mixers a replacement, a small version of the A nine. Uh, everything about it looks like it's it's dope. You know, if you don't want to spend all that crazy money on getting a whole a whole rig is like eight thousand bucks so you know if you could get this to practice on to then go it is dope i just don't understand the layout putting the pads on there and it's just it's all over the place let's just yeah. alpha theta and pioneer let's just stick to one layout and run with it this but ain't fucking there, rain <laughs> is there a spot for sticks on this i don't think this there is, is yeah there yeah there is sticks you could do uh Where? there's two spots the very very top right no, 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 no. Those are just I'm positive. I just watched the video of this one. So you it's sure? just yeah, yeah. I'm okay, positive. Okay. So yeah, this is this one can run sticks. And it's got um, a spot for a laptop out of the back, USB. Yeah. Yeah. So USB C though, which is cool. Which all of them should be USB C. Right, right. That's the move. Controller, if you are running a club and you just need to install something, I mean this thing's cool, but it, it's versatile that you could plug sticks in it or you could use your laptop. I just don't understand the and maybe they're putting the pads on there just so that you're stuck getting three thousands if that's what you really want the pro and you can't just cheap out and get this to where it like makes their pro obsolete right mm -hmm. it makes 
buying CDJs obsolete. Right. I don't know. Maybe they, I'm sure there's some kind of fucking reason behind it. So there's those two controllers. Just initial thoughts. Again, go watch the pros on the full breakdowns. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about is they dropped uh, some wireless headphones, which I'm a pioneer guy. Everything I own is pioneer. Even the headphones I think I have, uh, it's whatever the, the top of the line one is, the XDJ 10s or something like that. Right. Uh, now, I've tried some wireless ones in the past. They just don't get loud enough. In a really loud club, you know, you're struggling to get that volume hot enough. It's it's a, it, it kind of sucks. So I, I'd be interested to see, you know, if they were able to overcome that. But uh, just carrying a big old brick in my in my bag and another fucking thing to charge is low on something I want to do. Um, so that's my initial pick on that. I'm not, again, I'm not a DJ that's jumping around and put my headphones on top of girls' heads to be like, look at it. Let's take pictures that were your fun and you're DJing. I'm not doing that. So I use my headphones. So I guess there's off, there's reasons for it. You know, I, I feel like with pioneer sometimes that there's like a, okay, we're making stuff for Calvin Harris, and then we're making stuff for newbies and all you working <laughs> DJs in the middle. You're just kind of, you're one or the other here. And it's like, the idea is cool. But again, like you mentioned, something to charge a whole other dongle unit that will be a standalone to make it Bluetooth. It's just, that's a pass for me. Just give me a longer cable at that point. <laughs> and also what's interesting is the Alpha Theta brand was supposed to be more of the kind of experimental style controllers so it had the ominous duo the little battery thing it had the the opus the quad opus that was you know looked all wood and all crazy but the, they just ran all of these new ones under alpha theta as well so it's interesting they they said they weren't ditching the pioneer one but i guess we're gonna have to pay attention and see what they end up doing that the the wireless probably a, a pass for me i just don't see any reason for it that's it for that pioneer don't hate us alpha theta don't hate <laughs> us but come on come on man come uh, on, we got man. we got some words uh from our friend dj demand he's back with another correspondent video uh we love that he's been doing this uh we're gonna play a theme song and then we'll hear from him so here we go Dancing through the night, the music's in my soul. DJ demands on the decks, making my heart whole. With Drew on the side, infused tearing up the floor. We're vibing to the rhythm, always coming back for more. With every single song, we're together, we thrive. Drew's laughing hard. While few steals the show, DJ hit that drop. Let's feel the flow. Oh, DJ, spin that track and let it shine. With every single note, I'm yours and you're mine. Feel the pulse of the music, let it take us away. In this dance of life, we'll sway the night away. All right, DJ Demand here, reporting for the Drew and Fuse show. We're talking to wedding professionals and asking them what grinds their gears about DJs. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sure you have a list, huh? So I'm here with Kelly from Kelly C Images, and she's going to tell us right now what you now, not me, I'm perfect, but what, obviously, obviously. what do other DJs do without naming names that, that really piss off photographers in the wedding world? I honestly, there, there are not very many things. I think the biggest fear of photographers is not being in the room when important things are happening. So if, you know, there are toasts later on in the day or somebody's speaking or there's going to be a special dance and we're like downstairs or, you know, having dinner, not in the room, um, that's terrifying. So doing things without checking with the photo video team <laughs> is like, that's a, that's a terrifying one. We're all on the same team, right? We got to be We're doing this together. We're all on the same together. team. Yes. Likewise, if I have to take the couple out, I would of course be like, Hey Jason, like, do you mind, you know, if I grab the couple and take them out? Because then if you had something planned that you were going to do, like, that's not nice either. And you that's know, why we work so well together. It is. That's why, that's why I love you guys. So. All right. You heard it here. Thanks guys. 
Okay, so we're here from, with Brielle from I Do Planning and Events. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm asking people is, there's a lot of different people that come together yes. to do a wedding. Mm -hmm. but what is something that DJs do that really grinds your gears? Something that DJs can do to piss off a wedding planner? Not and it's not interrupt them during cocktail hour. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, no. All good. I'm trying to think. There's Honestly, the biggest one is when they don't, like they hear the word planner and they go, ugh, because we're not all bad. But just going over the timeline just to make sure that we're both right because I, the way I look at it, you're going to do your thing. I'm not the DJ. But we just want to make sure that the couple's stuff is in order. And that's really it. I'm just making sure that you are good and not like trying to just make show, sure, show us the way. Basically. Make sure we're on the same page. We're working together. Right, exactly. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm here with Doug Schneider. He is a business owner in the New Brunswick area. I'm standing in front of his, one of his newest places, uh, Dee Dee's Pizza, which is gonna be open... Couple weeks, October 1st. Couple of weeks. Uh, he owns a bunch of businesses in the area. He is running for uh, Board of Education in Edison Township. Um, and uh, he's also the first person who ever hired me uh, as a DJ back in college at Rutgers. Little known fact. Yes. Yeah. So. You've obviously dealt with a lot of DJs uh, throughout the years in your bars, clubs, restaurants, and everything. What's something that pisses you off about DJs? Not me, I'm perfect. But like all the other DJs, what, what's something that they could do that like they don't think about when they're in your venues? Uh, trust the venue to tell you how loud it should be. Too often, uh, we have situations where the DJ says, you know, if they hear their monitor, or they, they're just listening through their headphones. They can't feel what we feel out on the dance floor in the actual restaurant and it, it kills the experience. So it doesn't matter what you're playing if if the customers are uncomfortable and not every party has the same vibe. So you got to trust the person paying the bills and who's dealing with the client in this case, if it's a restaurant or a private event that we know what we're talking about. And that's why I keep calling me because I know. Right? You hit it, it hit home runs over and over and over again. He's the Aaron Judge of DJs around here. Red is bad, okay? If that red line on the mixer, that's bad. You don't want to go to red, okay? All right, thanks a lot, Doug. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Josh at Windows on the Water at Frogbridge. If you didn't know why they call it Windows on the Water, that's why. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, Josh, I'm asking everybody this question. What is something that grinds your gears about DJs? What's something that either pisses you off about DJs or something that maybe that you could tell us that DJs could do better that would make your job easier? So one of the biggest things that gets on most Mater D's nerves is if we t say, hey, this is the timeline, this is how we want to do things, and we discuss it, we agree on it, and then they just do their own thing. Like, it disrupts the flow of the night. We're all trying to make the party happen. Like. Just once you've discussed it, if it's something the bride and groom change, then we got to discuss it before you're like, oh, well, they said they wanted to do this special dance right now. And uh, it's like, you could have told me five minutes ago, we have something hot about to come out and... <laughs> Give everybody a heads up. Don't make any drastic changes without telling your fellow vendors. We're all on the same team here. That exactly. seems to be the, uh, the main theme, actually. I've asked a couple of people already and everybody really, whether they're a photographer or a maitre d' or a bartender, anybody, they all say the same thing. We're all on the same team. It is. And uh, communication, hey, it can make a lot of things go away. A lot of problems can just vanish if everyone's constantly communicating about what's going on. Love it. Thanks so much. Appreciate all right. it. All right. Just finished a party here at Crystal Point. I'm with Janine, our maitre d' today. And my question is, what is something that DJs do that kind of grinds your gears, that pisses you off. You mean what they don't do? And what? that is the time people to leave at the end of the night. To be fair, wow. I did tell them. I told them like five, five times, times. But, and it's half an hour now and they're still here. They had such a good time, they don't want to leave. That's great, but yes, keep those mics on an extra few minutes, make sure you say it a couple times, politely, uh, keep it moving towards the after party. Let's get them out of here. Lauren! What? What pisses you off about DJs? When they spend all day editing stupid videos instead of cooking dinner. I hope you guys learned something. I gotta go. The Drew and Few Show! All right, those were uh, some words from DJ Demand and a new video he cut just for you guys on the show. Um, it's always awesome. I love what he's been doing and, um, 
it's always helpful to hear these things and take take note of everything that of all those people what they said you know those are those are those are things to pay attention to at the wedding so was, he was interviewing some uh, important people at weddings so pay attention to that and make note his theme song do you think uh, he actually brings those dancers to along with him well you know as somebody who hired demand earlier this year i was disappointed when there was no um you know cloggers that he brought <laughs> with them but yeah i can see that yeah i was disappointed I, I i have been thinking about uh incorporating some some dancers into my my set so i don't look so boring up there with uh, just actually are, djing are you thinking the river dancers or I, I i don't know but i am hiring so if you guys know anybody then uh i'm gonna put together my my dancing team uh with that being said we're gonna move on to some music we're talking a little music this episode first up we're gonna do our dms picks of the week drew hit us with yours my pick of the week is justice d-a-n-c-e it's the mark wolf and marshall simon remix and yeah it's up on dms it's just a great you know, refresh of that justice classic DANC. I agree. I downloaded that one, uh, this week as well. Uh, it's great, great song, great, like blog house classic. I feel like, and this is a good refresher of that. Uh, and I, I'm just going to throw it out there, but did you see, uh, it's pretty sweet. Nick bike opened up for justice up in Vancouver his hometown yeah. up there. So pretty dope. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. They've been doing a big tour and I've been following along with all their their stuff recently and that's looked awesome and what a what a cool opportunity for him. Uh my DMS pick of the week is uh a new Daft's bootleg. It is the Bee Gees uh versus Metro and Zed and Alessia Cara Stay Stay Alive. Um a little refresh on Zed and Alessia Cara song stay and the bg staying alive um go download that one it's on dms now banger played it this weekend it uh it was great you got a little sneak peek of it before you guys did so yeah great one those are the dms picks and that is our sponsor and we have a little sponsor code if you want to go check that out and more yeah if you use the promo code drew and few show that'll get you 30 percent off your first month at direct music service once again that's promo code drew and few show 30% off your first month. Check it out. Uh, you won't be disappointed. With that being said, we are going to talk a little more music. Some of these edits are available on direct music service as well. And some of them we grab from other places, but these are just things that we've enjoyed and want to highlight and think that you might enjoy as well. Drew, why don't you hit us with your next pick? My pick is from DMS. It's uh, I have Simo just kills all of these indie bootlegs. He's uh, He does a new pack. Uh, hand selected and hand edited from him uh, every single week so if you're playing corporates or any kind of vibe vibey just background pool party stuff these are great uh, one that just really caught my ear this week I just really loved is the moon boots hypnotizing kind of has a cool piano groove to it um, housey not a, not a ton of lyrics but I really really dug the track so threw that one down there that's on DMS love it uh, my next pick is also on DMS. It's another edit I did. Um, it's the new uh, version that Cedric Gervais just did of We Are Family with Niall Rogers. Really good refresh. Thing that I didn't like, which I kind of cut out of this edit, was the two long breakdowns. I went straight into the chorus with this one. I think personally, I think it's very wedding friendly edit that this you could use now this mo more modern sounding version um the way i edited it it has a little um like hype in the second uh you know breakdown but i shortened it all up i really like the way it turned out like i mentioned just a good way to play uh, a new refresh um that's not so like edm and if they're putting it out then that means like the kids are gonna they might not be burned out on it you know i know some people uh, us DJs that have been playing for a long time are like, oh, it's so corny. But, you know, if this is getting refreshed, the kids don't know how corny it was. And right. maybe, maybe they take it a different way. So, well, um, it's kind of what's corny. Once corny is now cool again. And that's kind of what everybody needs to realize a bit. 
in that, you know, uh, I, I, I always ask, Hey, so what's, you know, what's cheesy or corny to you. And then it's stuff that I wouldn't think. And they would be like, yeah, but we love disco play disco. And you're like, right. okay, but you know, disco's hot right now. So, right. Anyways, uh, my next pick is actually from uh, club killers. It's uh Keisha Cole love. And it's the Trilly VM remix. And it puts it at 126. Just gives a little bit more uh, of a. It has some great dropouts where it has it needs a sing along, but it stays housey in the other parts. So I just I just really like this remix and that it's a huge sing along. So uh, great one for all your events. Awesome, I, I like that song too. So I'm gonna have to check out that that remix. Um, my next pick is another edit I put up. It's also on DMS. It's cool in the gang celebration. Same kind of vibe as the last one. It's the Metro remix. Um, I've really liked this remix always. I just didn't really always love the way it was structured. So I re-edited it and put a little hands up kind of break at the beginning to make that breakdown not so awkward and like more of a, a wedding, you know, party situation. But again, it's just a good, I just restructured it overall to, to make a little more sense in like the open format world. I did it for me the way I would play. I think other DJs will get use for it as well. That's cool in the gang celebration, the Metro remix, uh, the fuse hands up 2024 edit. Look at now that you're a wedding DJ, you're just slamming out all these like wedding beggars, <laughs> dude. I'm rich. I'm a wedding DJ. I, I make wedding edits. Uh, I can't help myself. <laughs> My third pick here is going to be Third Eye Blind versus M83, Semi Charm Life versus My C Midnight City. And this is the Victor Menigo edit bootleg from Bar Bangers. I've been playing this at my i played it last week at my emo night good way to change things up and you know i could see this working at a wedding as well ah uh, i want that one i'm gonna have to grab it i haven't grabbed that one yet uh my next edit we mentioned earlier because you know it's a halloween song because it's got scream in the title and shout <laughs> um, it's will i am featuring britney spears scream and shout the pete down 2024 remix also available on direct music service pete down has been just crushing it lately yeah. with Amen. all the refreshers he's been doing and um i haven't played scream and shout in a long time and um I downloaded it and just played it this past Friday at Fishbowl. And it was one of the bigger reactions of the night that I played. Um, and the way he structured it, where it just comes in with the, the bring the action. And it just comes in. And, dude, yeah, uh, it was great. Great at it. My next pick is, I'm going with a group here. So I'm going to name two tracks. And it's they are older. But I just think people are kind of finding it. A little bit more maybe i say this because i've been getting requests for it from the average club goer and this is jungle the group is jungle the first one is back on 74. it sounds like portugal the man and that other uh one republic song you can kind of fit it in between those and it has that that vibe so could definitely work for a cocktail song and then Candle Flame is the other one, and that's more up tempo, like indie indie vibes. And I love both of them. The group is super dope. Um, I've been doing a deep dive on those guys, so that's uh, you know something you could use in cocktail hours, dinners, whatever. Just throw that one out there. Love it. Uh, my next pick and my final pick for today is yet another Pete Down edit. And again, this is something that. You know, I feel like nobody's touched in years because it was just like everybody's tired of these playing some of these same like I don't want to call them like corny club classics, but they just got played out. And it's DJ Cool. Let me clear my throat. Pete Down totally refreshed this uh, and has a good OG flat intro. The song comes in like it would, but it's just a really good refresher. And I feel like I haven't seen a good edit of this in like 10 years and maybe no, no, no. i've never had a good edit of this i've never had a good quality version of this he actually he did some work on this one um it sounds i it just sounds better right um, so and and again some of these songs that might be old and 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 overplayed are are kind of back again and i think that it's important to to refresh the library with these and this is a great one yeah i took this one and deleted the 
So deleted all the other versions I had. Um, I have two more picks here. Um, going with uh, a Joe Maz edit. It's uh, John Summit, Where You Are, uh, versus uh, he put at the very beginning of it, um, Alpha Alphaville's uh, Forever Young in at the beginning of it. And I've been, I don't know if it's on TikTok or what, but I got a couple requests for Forever Young over the last month. So it, it has been on, uh, it has been a trending sound I've noticed when I've been scrolling. Okay. You know, so there's so two yeah. places I scroll before sleep and on the toilet. And every time <laughs> I, 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 I've heard it late recently. Um, uh, well, I didn't have a, a great version to play. So this one it came in clutch for that gives uh, enough of Forever Young, but keeps it fresh. And then the last one is just like my honorable mention. Uh, the guy that did <clears throat> a little boothang, Paul Russell. I actually saw this one talking about uh, shitters and bathroom breaks. Uh, I was at a uh, was at a restaurant and they had uh, you know the video things playing, and uh -huh. this was playing uh, his new single "Eat, Pray, Love." Has a killer little horn line. I just dig this track. It's fucking dope. And so I've been playing it uh, cocktail hours and. Actually, uh, works really well after that jungle uh, candle flame. So, been playing those back to back. It just uh, has a cool vibe. I I like it. It's it's like disco, hip hop, funk, um, yeah. but like modern. So, it's it's definitely a filler track, but I I like it. So, there you go. That's my honorable mention. Good filler tracks are needed, though. Like good oh, filler yeah. tracks are a necessity to, yeah, to yeah. DJing. Um, especially when you got those gigs where you're like, I'm just playing good music in the background for people that are like mingling or whatever. Those are the best when you, yeah. when you can just play good stuff. Uh, well, it's got a killer horn line and you know, he's familiar enough at this point. Right. That song His was name played out. is just forgettable though. Paul Russell so is like the most, the most forgettable name for like an artist. And I hate saying that to somebody who's making good stuff, but it's like, it sounds like he could be your accountant. Oh, Paul Russell. He's my accountant <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> oh, like an I, NBA player, Paul Russell. Like, it's just a name. Like, you know, like I, I didn't even realize it was him. I, I shazammed it. And then uh, that other, the booth thing came up too. And I was like, Oh fuck. Who knew? You know, right. Good songs, good picks. Uh, I think there's some really useful stuff in here for guys. If you if you're looking for new things to add to the library, there's a ton of picks in here that'll that'll help uh, your sets. Um, with that being said, that's going to wrap up for today. Drew, you have anything else you want to add? No, just that I'm playing out in Cincinnati the weekend of November 9th. So you're in the area, come and party. I'm doing a nightclub out there and fuse is also going to be in Seattle. I'm so going to be in Seattle. Go. I have all the spots I'm playing too. Hold on just a second. I'm pulling them up so I can make sure. Do you I know the name right. of the one I'm playing on that Saturday? <laughs> yes. It is called the Roosevelt room. That's what okay. you'll, you'll be playing on Saturday night. It's in Liberty center. So if you're even maybe a Columbus area, it's not so bad of a drive. Uh, you're not coming all the way down to the city. If uh, you know, you're going to be, wanting to come out and all that. Um, uh, it's a fun spot. It's a good, good DJ spot. Um, uh, when I'm in Seattle, I'm going to be out there the week of, let me see here. I can't even remember, uh, the 21st through the 24th of November. Um, Thursday night, I'm going to be kicking it country with phrase at his, uh, at his spot. He plays Thursday night. So if you're just wanting to hang, um, I'll be out there uh, in my cowboy boots doing the boot scoot and boogie uh, while Fraze is throwing down uh, all the line dance songs. So I'm just hanging out that <laughs> night. Uh, Friday night, me and Fraze are playing together at the Forum in Bellevue. Saturday night, we're doing a brunch spot called Muse. Or I'm sorry, Saturday day, we're doing a brunch spot called Muse. And then Saturday night, uh, I'm doing a headlining <laughs> set at a club called Vice. So, nice. um, that's where I'll be in the Seattle area that weekend in November. Um, I cool. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to you being out here. We're going to have a good time. We'll try to vlog it all. And, uh, both trips, we'll try to vlog it all and, and post good content for you guys to see. Um, 
we'll, we'll get some more of uh, Drew Pierce uh, eating Skyline. I know everybody likes likes you know <laughs> talking about Skyline chili these days. It's trendy. That's right, Brian and Joe. It's trendy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, there you go. Um, that's all she wrote. Fuck it. That's all she wrote. Um, short one.